Today we're analyzing some more Bussin to Tekken King gameplay. I'm not skipping any games to give you guys a good idea of how the journey went. If you want to start from the beginning, you can watch my previous video, link is in the description. Hope you enjoy. This next match is against a Ling player. I'll play the rounds out, then share what I'm thinking, what's working, and what's not. Let's get started. Round one. Fight. <laughs> So after the first interaction, I backdash twice then play 3 plus 4 to catch Ling's forward movement. I immediately test the Ling to see if she'll tech roll, but my dash wasn't deep enough. If she doesn't tech roll here, I can float her for a full combo. After she stood up, we're at prime spacing to bait a whiff. But unfortunately she let her string rip, and my timing was too slow. I've noticed in these ranks Ling players love using this grab, so we should be more prepared to break it. On wake up, running three is pretty standard, so I sidestepped and punished. Then the round was pretty much over. Let's keep going. Round two, fight. <laughs> Although we pulled through with the low commitment, there are a couple of mistakes I want to highlight. Firstly, we can see the Ling is pretty impatient in neutral. Yes, we want to be aggressive, but we can see that every time I bait her with spacing, it works out. But being over aggressive, especially against Ling, can be very dangerous. Reeling it back a bit is probably a good idea. Next is throwing Sentai 3 plus 4 again. I usually overuse this option to counter jabs and power crush, which I run into often, but after seeing the Ling just hold back last time, it doesn't hurt to play something safer. Let's keep it going. Round three. Fight. <laughs> Another ripped string catches my Unsoku 4. It's kind of difficult to time in between string hits, so I'm contemplating whether or not to just get better at it, or use it less. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Another running 3 from Ling, you guys know the drill now. I'm too far for down forward 1-2, so I used forward forward 2 as a whiff punish. After spamming running 3, I used Stonehead, which flips sides when broken. It would be a lot smarter to go for my 2 break, as it doesn't switch sides no matter what. Upon realizing my mistake, I quickly used 2 plus 4 to get out of there. From there, I'm at perfect heat smash range. People really underestimate how far this reaches. Works like a charm. A few quick pokes and that's game. The Ling didn't rematch me, so let's see who's the next opponent. Elisa, great. I'm sorry Elisa players. But my strategy hasn't changed since red ranks. I'm going to mash and be as oppressive as possible, because I don't know how to defend against you.
So my strategy was working pretty well, but we don't actually want to be playing like this. So let's stop whining and put on our thinking caps. First of all, we should know that if Elisa hits her down 3 at tip range, she can be up to plus 16 on hit, giving her a guaranteed backup 1 for 48 damage. But not only is backup 1 a high, it takes a lot of skill to hit confirm the tip range before throwing it. If you see the Elisa going for this, or it looks like her down 3 may have hit tip range, ducking is a pretty good bet. Another note, we really want to know how to punish her back 4-4 on block. It's an I-15 normal hit launcher, so we can't let her get away with it. Elisa can choose to either just do back 4-4 and be minus 37 on block, or go into her boot stance at minus 19 and airborne. We want to find a punish that covers both options. It'll be different depending on your character, so hit the lab if you're not sure. For Reyna, forward forward 2 is the most consistent for me, so that's what I'm sticking with. So we can see how good tip range down 3 is there. I probably could have seen it coming, but that's okay. I'm in a pretty bad spot, so I pop heat to create space. I backdash sidestep to cover most of Elisa's approach tools, and I find my opening. Then a miss input running 3 cost me the round. Not the end of the world, let's keep focused. Round three. Fight. So I've finally caught on to Elisa's down 3 approach, but I can punish it way harder. I still haven't ducked her back up 1 yet, which would have made this set infinitely easier. But we learn through pain, and undesirable matchups are filled with pain, so let's see it as a positive. Elisa's while standing 2 into boot is also fake pressure. It's minus 13 by itself, so I probably should have just done down forward 1-2. If she goes into boot, you'll just float her. Unfortunately, I mistimed my sidestep here. And here I actually thought this move had good tracking, so I sidestep blocked. If I continued to sidewalk, I could have evaded it pretty easily. So I'll take note for next time. A cool but sucky heat smash interaction, then a really bad forward forward 2 which lost me this round. I'm feeling the pressure here, but it's final round. We'll see who cracks. Final round. Fight. <laughs>
You can tell both of us aren't playing solid anymore, with both of us resorting to immediate timings and challenging everything. Fortunately for me, Elisa's overuse of back 4-4 cost her so much life, and a cute Oki trap at the end finished her off. I have a handful more games until I hit Tekken King. If you guys are interested, give this video a thumbs up and I'll keep them coming. I hope you've learned something today, and as always, thanks for watching.